If you want to know what you spend every month on your EV, if you want to know all of your trips, how far did you go, what was your average consumption, if you want to know all of your charging sessions, how many kilowatt hours did you charge, what is your AC to DC ratio, and you don't want to write all of this down yourself, then Tronity is exactly what you need. Tronity connects to your car, a lot of brands are supported, and in the app or in a browser you can see all of this data. You can also have 100% text compliant driver's logbook. My viewers get 25% off if they use the link in the description below. Hello everyone, today it's time for another exciting charging curve and today we're gonna talk about the Kia EV9. Famously it has, it has an 800 volt technology like the EV6, Ionic 5, Ionic 6 and so on, but it's a way lower voltage, we're gonna see this uh, on the charging screen, that a fill of Ionity, I charge from 10 to 90 percent at Ionity, um, but it's also a bigger battery where the others are 75 kilowatt hours or the Ionic 5N, the new Ionic 5 and the new Kia EV6 will have an 80 kilowatt hour battery usable. The Kia EV9 has a 99.6 kilowatt hour battery usable is 90, 96 and yes it charges a bit differently and like I said the voltage is a bit lower. We're gonna look at the session that I filmed of Ionity then we're gonna look at the charging curve compare it to the EV6 and the Ionic 5N and also see which is important, which car gets more range into the battery over time. Here we are, like I said, started with 10% and we only get 165 kilowatt, but it will fast at 20% go up to 200 kilowatt. And I think the battery was not at perfect temperature. Now it will go up, even though the car said that it's fine, but I had it in other charging sessions that it was at 200 kilowatt right away. And as we see, we're not even at 600 volt at 30, 40% we get to the 600 volt. And this is not a very high voltage battery, the amps are fine. The peak of power we get at around 217 kilowatt and then we drop down in steps, there we go. 200 kilowatt, 190, now 180, where is it? There and then even 170 and then 130 and then at 80% we are under 100 kilowatt. So we are above 100 kilowatt from 10 to 80%, most of the time above 200 kilowatt, which is awesome. And then under this we go down pretty fast, so we should leave at 80%. Now 70 kilowatt and it will get lower and lower and at uh, 90 kilo, uh, 90 percent we only have 41 kilowatt. So really at 80% you leave. You, the range from 10 to, to 80% it really should be enough hopefully so you can get to the next charger that would the best would be the best for time and then at 90% soon we have charged almost 90 kilowatt hours from 10 to 90% wow and here we have our curve and like I said I think that here in the beginning this it would go up to around 200 kilowatt right away if the temperature would be perfect. I didn't, I, I, did I preheat the battery? I think I preheated the battery, uh, but not for very long. And it said uh, it's fine. It should be okay, but I think it wasn't enough. It could be better. That's, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing because again, I have seen the car at 15% or so to get 200 kilowatt. So I don't think this is normal, but the rest looks amazing. Got steadily up to here. What is this? 57% or so where we get our peak of 217 kilowatt and then step, 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 steps down. And then here, oh my God, under 100 kilowatt at around here. And then it just goes down. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to see that. Uh, <laughs> and then it really goes down here at the end. So leave. I mean, if you have the range, you could leave even around here, which is 70% but it's all about uh, uh, if this is enough for your trip, but it's awesome because at the 70% um, I have charged 65 kilowatt hours into the battery from the 10%, which is really, really cool. But let's compare it to the charging curves of the Kia EV6 and the Ionic 5N. They both also have 800 volt systems, but they have a smaller battery and they have higher voltages 
and they can charge a bit differently and you can see that here where the ionic 5n here goes right away to 241 kilowatt and goes up to a peak of 265 and uh, 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 kia ev6 goes right away to 221 and stays to 236 um, the EV9 just goes up to 200 but stays a bit for longer. So you can see at around 57% where the peak is, this is where the EV9 has a better charging curve than the other cars. But again, it's a bigger battery. So energy wise, um, it's, it's just slower then because, but it's a gigantic car, you have a higher consumption, you need that big battery. So the other cars charge better, charge uh, more kilowatt hours in there. We're going to see that uh, when we switch to the next few. Important are also the times. From 10 to 80%, the EV9 took around 26 minutes, but I started at 10% in a ramp up process would need some time and also I think like I said cold battery so I give it 25 and a half minutes so it's it, it was slower than this but I think it, this is possible. The EV6 took 18 minutes 10 to 80 percent. The Ionic 5N took 21 and a half minutes but it's a bigger battery. Now to the kilowatt hours. How many kilowatt hours get charged into the battery with charging loss? Um, over time and here it's interesting you can see that the EV9 is underneath uh, the other cars till 20 minutes after 20 minutes the EV9 uh, has more kilowatt hours charged again with charging loss into the battery the Ionic 5N is then after that and the Kia EV6 is last but also the EV6 had the smallest battery at around 74 kilowatt hours Ionic 5N 80 and the EV9 100 and uh, very interesting, but the most important thing is the range. The last graph now shows you the kilometers uh, of range that you add uh, into the car over time, again with charging loss. And I took the average consumption, so the kilowatt hours charge, and I uh, calculated the kilometers of range with the average consumption that these cars had when I did a range test at 130 kilometers an hour on the highway. And the Ionic 5N, uh, uh, one or two months ago, had 274 watt hours per kilometer average consumption, but it's a very sporty car. The normal Ionic 5 will have a lower consumption. The Kia EV6 I tested in the summer with AC at 22, 23 degrees, and it had 249 watt hours per kilometer, which was interesting in eco mode and everything uh, was really weird, a high consumption for the car. I thought it would be lower. The uh, EV9 last weekend when it was cold and it needed heat had 321 watt hours per kilometer average consumption but when I get uh, take the heat, the, the heat uh, off so it doesn't heat and it would be a bit warmer I think it would be 310 maybe even 300 let's give it 300 let's be nice um, but then it's it has to be perfect conditions <laughs> because it is a bit on the thir uh, thirsty side but even with that with this consumption you see with the charging curve that the range added into the car is lower until here 25 minutes where it's then the same than the Ionic 5N and the Kia EV6 is always on top because it had the lowest consumption and it still charges really well. So as you can see the charging power is great but compared to the other two cars it's not that amazing. It's underneath the other two and the peak is not amazing. It stays above 100 kilowatt a long time as the others do as well. But the smaller battery charges better and gets more kilowatt hours into the battery and then because you have this gigantic car that has a, a, a big consumption, high consumption, you don't get as much range into the car which is sad. So I think the charging curve needs a bit improvement. Um, I think it could be better uh, when it's compared to the other cars. Again, other cars uh, don't charge as well and don't have 800 volt system or here 530 to 630 volt. Um, 
that's but uh, again uh, compared to the other two cars it doesn't charge that amazing if you want to follow me on instagram battery life one and if you want to support the channel there's a patreon link in the description below and here on youtube there's also channel membership and if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes if you want to see equipment that i use and test it a bit and compare it then check out my third youtube channel behind the battery but that's it for me thank you very much for watching have a great day and take care bye